You better make sure this is recording. I just hit record. Do you see the little record icon on your computer? Is it showing up? Oh, no. You're the fine. last one. In, all right. Yeah, I you see. Actually, you go. I can see the record. Now, this wasn't showing last time, but I didn't know to look. No, no. So here's what happened last time. David okay. said very defensively. David is very defensive. He's a defensive person. So I had recently upgraded from, um, the free version of Zoom to the paid version of Zoom. With the free version of Zoom, you reach over with your mouse, you hit record, you're done. Okay? Yeah. Okay. You were my guinea pig for the paid version of Zoom. Eh. Well, you know, I deserve that. I deserve that paid version. Man. You did. Well, you didn't deserve what I did to you, though. Now you're, you're just, freezing you're, up. You're freezing up periodically, but this is part right, of the I'm gonna course. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna take this somewhere else. Hold on a second, all right? Okay. Can we come with you? With me, yeah. Hold on a second. <clears throat> yeah, we need a nice strong signal. You look very inquisitive. Inquisitive. Where should I go? You're inquisitive. Oh, I like the hardwood right there, that exposed beam. Is it fake or real? Is it just decorative or is it a real one? No, that's real. That's many, many years old. Oh. Actually, you know what I'll do? I'll come over here. <laughs> All right. Yeah. There we go. So we still should figure out how we could fuck this one up. But let's okay. but so here's what happened. So with the free version, uh, okay. You just hit record, you're done. And you and I were like, let's keep it organic. We're just gonna jump right in. I hit record, yeah. jump right in. What I didn't realize is that there's a drop up menu in the paid version of Zoom where you have to choose either record on the cloud or record on your computer. I didn't know gotcha. that was coming. I didn't look, I was looking at this fancy Hollywood guy. Yeah, yeah. And then so you fancy. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> I don't know how we can recreate that magic. It was, I swear to God. I don't know, but you know, it's wild. So, um, I, you know, Fred Willard passed. He, I, and I love him. Yeah. Jerry Stiller passed. Yeah, we were actually, we talked about Jerry. I know we uh, did. Yeah, and he passed away, which was very, uh, that was uh, sad because it's he was. Sad. I mean, it's timely and sad great. at the same time. You know, I yeah. think he was 92. But um, yeah. such an amazing, brilliant guy. So it, it is a shame. I, I, I just, you know, we did our little promo because right after I screwed the whole thing up, I called you. It was, it was funny and upsetting all at the same time. Yeah. And I've watched it a bunch of times. And it was almost like you were getting pumped because I don't think you really believed me until it's No, I didn't. At first, I was kind of like, what's happening? You know, but uh, yeah, then, uh, but then I realized, and I remember we hung up with that second call and yeah. I, I said to my wife, what a fucking asshole. <laughs> <laughs> when we hung up, I said that about myself, too. <laughs> Scott was so upset, he said he had to drink down some whiskey just to try to feel better. <laughs> and to wash down his pain. Yeah. You know? so, and, and, but yeah, go ahead. It, it really was, I mean, it's funny, because in the midst of it, you know, one can take any sort of area of endeavor trial lawyer you're a skier you're running the slope yeah. really nicely you're a musician you're acting a scene you feel like you killed it right yeah i felt like it was such a nice interview and, and the one thing we won't even try to do now is two people getting to know each other because we kind of did that time we did that yeah we yeah. did that and we don't need to do it again but what was so upsetting to me is i felt so good throughout yeah. and then i got to harvest it and it ain't there yeah <laughs> Well, I mean, we'll just do it, you know, we'll just do it like two old buddies shooting the shit. That's right. Yeah, that's right. So let me let me go backwards a little okay. bit because the magic we created mm -hmm. is, is only known to you, Mo, and I. Um, yeah. So you are an actor, but you're originally from New Jersey. I am originally from New Jersey, yeah. I went to uh, Wall High School. I went to Brookdale, Brookdale Community College. I right. worked at Sideroffs in Belmar. My family owned it. Uh, I worked at Bar Anticipation. I worked at Poor Boy Sub Shop. I did Shout all. Shout out all to Tommy Janarone. Tommy Janarone, love Tommy. We've we've known each other for 
Jesus Christ, 30 years now. Wow. Wow. Yeah, 30 years. Yeah. And then, and then you get the acting bug. So just take us on the journey again. Because I always thought, you know, it's funny. I always, uh, I always wanted to do something, you know, so like, like that. I've always been a ham, right? I've right, always right. been kind of like attention. Uh, when I was young, it was about attention. Like I, I just wanted. Uh, and so any a kind of spring of insecurity, no doubt. Well, what actor isn't? <laughs> Actually, what human isn't? You tell me one human. That's true. That I'm like, but uh, you know, actors we may have it a little bit more, and um, and which is fine. I I live on that, and and yeah, and don't let it override my uh, creative. But so, um, you know, even as far back in high school, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't be in the theater department in high school because it was you know I was listening to Van Halen. I was wearing spandex. I was you know I was that kind of you know long hair, earrings, right. smoking a lot of weed. I used LSD like that stuff I did like that, but, but I did, I did want a band. So I would, you know, once in a while with, uh, you know, uh, I think his name was Scott Kempel. He played guitar. He was really good back then. Other guys and we'd get together and then we'd put on one or two shows at the school in the auditorium. But he's right. always wanted that kind of um, front and center. Well, let me ask you this because you're, you're tapping into something that, that's in my own sort of personal narrative is that the artistic side of you, I'm sensing, didn't want the pre-packaged version of artistic endeavor. In other words, you know, you could do the school play, which is organized by somebody else, a play written by someone else that's sort of yeah. pre-packaged. You could join the school band, but you're doing that. But instead, you chose to do your own thing, but still, even at a young age, wanted to artistically express yourself. Is that oh, sort of yeah. that? Perfect. But, but outside of the, of the of the box outside of the box and you know that and that goes you know i mean it's a different time but you know fast forward to after i've been on you know tv series and done stuff i wanted to do it again and that and i started a band uh called right. the scooby band you know this was years ago uh but that, that was another form of that where you know when you do tv and when you do uh film and when you do voiceover and stuff and you're working for companies or studios or whatever you right. are essentially in a box Right, you you listen to this person and this person and that person, and right. they want a package. Yeah. So I've always liked being outside of that package, although you know you have to be in that package. Right, you, you know, and, and, and it's interesting because you know, like like even for your acting, let's say, you know, mm -hmm. there, there's limits to how much creativity you can infuse into your character before you're pissing off the screenwriter or director. I would imagine. Well, they're choices. Yeah, I mean, an actor can make a choice, but if the director and the producers don't like that choice, um, they'll, you know, you know, a lot of them will gently say, hey, let's try something else. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? Um, although there, there are some people who aren't nice and they'll do other stuff. And, you know, which brings me to this, you know, when I was younger, when I first started working, you know, uh, on TV and stuff, I would, I was always very like, okay, is that okay? Like, is that great? Or, or should I, do you want me to change it or whatever? And if the people weren't necessarily nice, I would kind of just kind of either shrink or, 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 or be like, okay, yeah, whatever. But now, and this yeah. started happening like maybe 10 years ago. If you don't, if you don't treat me right, I ain't treating you right, man. You know what I mean? So it's, it, it's, it, 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 I happened. like that. I like that. You know. It happens at a certain age, you know, and, and you know, when you have, you know, like even with me, excuse me, I saw a turning point, um, the way I look at and interact with judges. I look at them as peers yeah. now, you know, uh, and, and there's some who are a boatload smarter than I am and that's fine. Yeah. But just sort of emotionally, intellectually, I don't look at, you know, I don't, I don't look like this unless, yeah. I mean, they could be younger and I could look at them like that, but. But in terms of that sort of experiential factor, I don't, I, I just sort of turned the corner in my professional life. And I would imagine the same thing would apply to an actor, but there's yeah. risk to it for you and me for that matter. Well, I think, I mean, in any business, probably, you know, I mean, yeah. but the truth is, is that like, you know, I'm just speaking specifically as from an actor standpoint, it's like, mm -hmm. When you've done when you've done a bunch of stuff and you've got credits and you know the technicality of film and television acting and you know a lot of it's just technical, um, you just and you want to be on the same playing field and you, and after a while with everyone else. So if you right. feel like you're getting um, shit on, 
or, or a, you know, not as much respect is coming your way as say someone else that you're working with. Yeah, you can, you can feel that. And so yeah. now the days I don't, I don't let that be in right. my life. And, so, and, and, and so, even if yeah. it does, if, it, if it, even if it bites me in the ass, it's like, well, fuck it. But, but you know what else? When, if you walk away from that, because you have a, a sense of self and confidence and pride, it mm. sets you up much more nicely for the next experience, I would think, or the next professional interaction. Yeah, and not to mention the fact, like, I mean, this all goes into the same shoe. It's like, you have to trust the people you're working with. So you have to trust the director. You have to trust the cinematographer. You have to trust, you know, the, arts, the art department and all everything that everyone is doing their job to the, you know, and, and the editor, when you're done filming, mm. you want to know that the editor is going to, Right. take these chunks and make a fucking you know journey right, right. You'll be great. um so once that trust is not there and it's happened to me before um you start to kind of shy away and kind of like go you know what i don't really want to do this but you're still doing it and that right. leads to a disaster Bad stuff. yeah yeah so uh, i want to do this right now so about six or seven years ago I have a friend of mine who had back-to-back -back $55 million verdicts. And he was a solo- $55 president. million dollar what? Verdicts in a trial. Okay. Back-to-back. -back. Uh, and he owned his own law firm and no, nothing had to be shared with anyone else. He, wow, spoke, yeah. uh, he spoke on a panel that I had put together and I made a huge mistake. I didn't start the presentation by giving those credentials and people weren't listening enough to him. And I thought, oh my God, you're hearing. So I haven't done that with you right now. I want to do it before we get deeper in. So, yeah. you know, just so people know, we're chatting with a guy who's had incredible success on television and other forms of media. So yeah. just give us just a little snippet, then we can break it up. But I want to just get a little snippet of, you know, obviously to me, King of Queens, and I've, I've watched, I've been all over yeah, YouTube yeah. watching this stuff. But give us a little resume ish stuff. Um, well, I mean, uh, you know, the first thing I did was in Chicago, it was called Early Edition. I did two episodes of it and we're going way back to like 96. Okay. Um, and after that, you know, I, you know, I was in Chicago doing theater and I got a small uh, recurring on ER, which filmed okay. out here in Los Angeles at Warner Brothers. And I played a character named Renato and he was a medevac and I came out here and then I finally wound up moving here from Chicago and ER helped pay for that, which was wow. phenomenal. Um, and once I was here, I, uh, you know, I just started auditioning and I lucked out and I started testing to play opposite certain people in, as series regular and on different series, uh, which happened quick. Um, and then I got a series called uh, Strip Mall, which was on Comedy Central. And it oh. was, uh, it was, you know, I did seven. I wasn't a regular, but I should have been because I did seven of the episodes and it only ran for like 12, I think. Um, okay. And then while I was doing that, I for a show called uh, an audition for a show called King of Queens, the King of Queens, and I went in and I didn't get the part. And then we talked about this, where I, I went in like four or five times for five different characters, didn't get it. Next time they called, they you know it's another part. And I went in, got it, and that was King of Queens. And then I've tested. I've been to network a bunch of times for series that didn't get picked up. I've done a pie. I did a pilot for ABC. Didn't go you anywhere. Did the Fosters. Uh, I was on the Fosters. I did 10 episodes of the Fosters. Um, you know, there's a ton of stuff like Santa Clarita Diet. And I just did, uh, uh, at the end of last year, I did a show called um, Snowfall, which is like one of my favorites. It's so good. It's on AMC. Um, uh, CSI, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's Google me. <laughs> right, right. And I did. I and I did. Right. But you know what's cool? So, uh, you know, like it's, it's nice because we had sort of the, Never to be released, only the three of us know what happened, interview from yeah, a couple yeah. weeks ago or so, not even a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Um, so I'm thinking about this. You've got a sort of a trifecta. I don't know if you could sing or dance, but here's what I'm thinking about. And a little bit we talked about last time, so it's like a cheat sheet for me. I know you've yeah. got great acting chops because I've watched some pretty intense scenes. And when yeah. scenes got serious, uh, I, I'm, I'm not an actor nor a student of that, but I, I think I could sort of tell. You know, and I, I could tell you're a good actor. Um, and you've got thank you, you talk to, you're welcome and, and we talked last time and i want we'll explore the drop again today if you'd like you're a very tall guy you're six four six five yeah it's like six five yeah so. okay and then the other thing we didn't talk about uh, i'm a guy who was on radio on a very wayne's world level you know yeah. for years um you've got a you've got a great voice and we didn't talk about that last time you've got a really 
sort of a deep, your voice resonates. I don't know if you worked on it or if it's just the way it is. No, it's just the way it is. It's years of tequila and cigarettes. And I'll tell you, I, um, I did, uh, I do a lot of voiceover. Well, I, I've done I've done voice campaigns. I, I was the voice of Goodyear Tires for two years. Oh, really? Yeah, I did all their TV commercials and, and stuff. And then I was the more recently I was the voice of Lowe's. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, I did that for. Let me hear it. Let's, can are you allowed to? Can you do? I'm not doing that. I'm not going to do it. But I'll tell you what. Yeah. Six months, seventy-seven national TV commercials. Is not too shabby, brother. That's right. All right. So here's what I, I'm going to challenge you right now. I came up, a buddy of mine uh, worked at Young and Rubicon years ago, and he ran uh, whatever company on Advil. Mm -hmm. I was still a young, unmarried guy, young yeah. adult. And I came up with a line. I want to hear you give it to us. Drink all you want. Advil takes care of the rest. Drink all you want. Advil takes care of the rest. Oh, I like you, you. What you had that sort of deep resonance toward the rest part. That was very well done. You should do that for a little time. Ah, well, maybe I have. Um, but I was also the voice of Prowl in the Transformers universe uh, online cinema. It was like online games that people played, and I did the voice of Prowl for a couple of years. It was great. It was that's really that's great. good stuff. So, so in the world of actors. Like, I would guess, you know, and, and again, I'm, I'm hearkening back to our last conversation. Yeah. Do you remember the old days of the Best Western off of Sunset where all the actors that have breakfast, you know that place? Yeah. A buddy of mine took me there and he, he kind of explained to me the whole scene. And I'm thinking, you know, and there you'd have the screenwriters, you know, trying to put together whatever they're hoping yeah. to sell and the young actors, both serving you and eating there. Yeah. And this is a re yours is a remarkably successful career, and, and it's really consistent with you know like our theme on guitar tells you're you're remarkably successful. Will our viewers know the names of Alex Scooby just off the top of their heads? No, but then if they go on TV, they've seen you, they've heard you on television, radio, and things like that. I get it all the time. I know you from somewhere. Like where are you? Yeah. Who do I know? Do you live? You live in my neighborhood, or or do you go to this? I'm like, no, I don't do any of that. You you know, and I, you hate answering that. Right. Like, but you, you know, I, it's like, you hate saying, oh, I was on TV. It's like, right. I just but usually you, look at them and go, I don't know. You know I mean? so, so you've been, you've been out there 20 ish years in LA? I've been in Los Angeles since uh, 98. So, yeah, 20, so 22. Yeah. Right. So I would think, you know, you come there, you, you, you presumably make a, a, a lot of friends, and, and here we are 20, maybe not. Well, it depends on what you mean by friends. I mean, a lot of times you're just making connections because you're making connections. Will they become okay. friends? Maybe. All right. So let's talk about just acquaintances, right? Mm -hmm. there, some of some of those folks you might know. Folks who are just skyrocketing, you know, into you know. Like I how much, okay. Yeah. And but some of them, you know, either were unsuccessful or gave up, or you know, yeah. you're you're really close to the top of that heap in that you are what is, I think, a rare commodity, a, a successful working actor in Hollywood. I would think that if, if someone ran the numbers, if that's even yeah. possible, I would think that that is something that's not very common. It's not, but I will say that it's not. I mean, a lot of times, a lot of times, you know, uh, you know being an actor, it, first of all, your, your skin needs to be thick. Oh, right, 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 because you're getting rejected. No, I, got, I mean, I can't even, I can't even tell you how many thousands. I mean, I have no idea how many times people said no, or, you know, he's just not that good, or he's not what we're looking for, or he doesn't, even, he's bald, or he's way too tall, or it's all this shit. And it's or what about, shit. what about, he's not good? You ever, like that? Oh, I'm no, listen, that okay, does. so here's a funny story. So, yeah. okay, and by the way, just, you, you keep saying I'm extremely successful. The truth of the matter is, it, the, the ups and downs, I mean, <laughs> Right, I can't imagine. Right. But I'll tell you what, I'll tell you this though, man. This this leads me to this. So Jerry Stiller, I was in his dressing room. This is a night after taping an episode of King of Queens. And you know, he had martinis and we'd sit there, him and I, and talk. And he said to me one time, because I was having problems. My my son had just been born and I was just kind of like, you know, scattered. And I was young. And he goes, Alex, listen to me. This is Jerry Stiller. He said, he said, Don't measure your success by what show you're working on or what you're doing as an actor or when you're, you know, when you're working. He says, measure your success by how you handle the downtimes. Mm. You're not working. 
right? Mm -hmm. You're trying to get a gig or whatever. He goes, that's where you measure. So that was Jerry Siller told me, I'll never forget it. That's uh, beautiful. Yeah. It, it that's universally, universally applicable, right? Yeah. No. You know, like, like, again, I always bring things back to what I do in my day job, which is as a lawyer, we all learn more from our trial losses than our trial victories. Oh, you know, of it's, course. it's not even close. Well, if you're always winning, then there's no, there's no, uh, there's no depth to that. There's no, no. depth. No, and depth, you could, depth comes from loss. Yes, absolutely. And, and you could even go back to Freud, who, who I'll bastardize this, but he basically theorized that consciousness develops from unsatisfied wants and needs, and it makes perfect sense. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I went to GW undergrad. And when I met all the absurdly rich people who got everything they wanted, I determined that they were unconscious. <laughs> I think I was, yeah, I mean, I think I was no, right. there's nothing there. They're not, they're not, they're, there's no, um, like, you know, I, I meet a lot of people and I meet a lot of actors and I can always kind of, um, uh, I don't know how else to say this, but I can always kind of tell within the first, like, I don't know, five minutes of talking to these, to someone, if they're a good actor. And, and I don't even have to really see what, mm -hmm. but there's a, there's a characteristic, there's, there's a depth of personality. And there is, when someone has bled enough in life, mm. someone has had pain and suffering, whether, whether it's within the family, with its, you know, love life or, or, you know, financial ruin or whatever the hell it is. And, and I'll jump stuff, in as you're setting this up, because I, I love what you're getting at. Yeah. It could be pain that was caused by oneself or of externally. Course. Of course. Okay. Yeah. Now I mean, it, it's, there's what I'm saying is you can kind of get the gist of someone's character within five minutes. Yeah. Right? You just can. Yeah. And you can also sense if, you know, if they're good at their passion, mm -hmm. it doesn't even have to be an actor. It could be anything. You know what I mean? Um, but I've, but that's always been like this thing through my life where you, I can tell, like, I can just, I don't know. It's something, it's wild. Well, I think you're, you're, what you're doing. So let, let's, let's break it down a little bit. So as an actor, you are portraying the human condition in various scenarios, right? Mm -hmm. And how can someone approach that craft without having an appreciation firsthand of the human condition? Yeah. And, and in your, you have an empathy empathic is that right an empathic yeah. perception of someone you're chatting with or, yeah. or, or you know interfacing with yeah. and if there is sort of a vacuousness about them oh, you know yeah. immediately that they they can't emote the human experience <laughs> right so true man you know yeah. and yeah so it's it's wild but yes yes to all that yeah yeah i you know what i think i'm gonna throw this out i think we're re we're not recreating surpassing the greatest interview in the history of movies. I think we're going past it right now I think we are yeah. I think we are so let, let, let's talk a little bit now so here you are you know you're, you're an artist and you have the artist plastic arts you know you're a musician but that's not your main gig so yeah. here we are in, in in the midst or maybe exiting COVID who knows right mm -hmm. um, what are you doing vocationally artistically and when they sort of you know overlap to, so to, to you know, keep those juices flowing. Yeah. So I do. Uh, you know, every morning I I do these like little videos and I put them out. And you can think they could, they might be dumb, they might be funny. You might. It go, is what oh, I think. This. What's that? It yeah. is what I think. It, but whatever, it doesn't. It's not for you or for anyone. It's for me. Yeah. Right. It's for me. Right. I just right. allow everyone else to see it. You know right. Right. I mean? Right. That's pretty. So, you, that's a good thing you do. You kind of approach. I shouldn't do that. I just look. <laughs> <laughs> But no, I'm serious. So that kind of stuff, like that little stuff, is just yeah. in my head. That's me. Want, like I'll wake up with an idea. Like the other yeah. day was the alphabet. So I like, saw oh, that. I loved it. I that's loved it. It's like it's just it's nothing. But it's but I love doing it. Like it's it just wasn't kind of, nothing. It, it, I loved yeah. it. What, what you, <laughs> and again, like I'm like I'm I'm such like a, a uh, an amateur student of acting, right? So I don't know shit. Yeah. I don't. But I watched it, and, and you and for folks who didn't see it, first of all, Google it. It's really cool. You went through the alphabet, and you, I'll use the word again, you emoted a certain feeling for various letters of the alphabet, but the words <laughs> that exited your mouth 
were just the fucking letters, right? It was just the fucking letters, yeah. And it was, it was really cool because yeah. you, you were convincing that F and G were really upsetting, you know, but then you were laughing over G and H. And it, it was very cool. And it's just, you wing it. I mean, it's just, but, it, it, but that's the kind of stuff that I'm talking about. So, and then also, you know, uh, my wife, Mo Collins, was, um, uh, had a character named Lorraine on Mad TV. And, we, and she, we came up with this to do a YouTube channel. It's called Lorraine. And we've done like, five, we haven't done one in a few weeks, but right. it's out there just to kind of have fun and do that. That's, that's a feeling of emoting, you know. Yeah. Uh, so just stuff like that. Oh, I'm also doing, uh, I'm, I'm doing voice work. I'm dubbing movies with a friend of mine. Uh, okay. A director named William Butler. Uh, the last one we did was called Barbie and Kendra Save the Tiger King. And it's through Full Moon <laughs> Features. It's out there now. They got a ton of views. I, I voice, see what they do, he takes a, a movie from like Italy or Germany or whatever. So, so something in this country that's a, a theater yes. scene. It's like, it's like mystery science theater. You remember right, that? Right, right, right. Yep. Okay. So they, they, they take, take the film. They take all the, vo the vocals away. So all you see is actors kind of moving their mouths. He writes right. a script and we dub it in our language, in our words, in our thing. And is, that's what we do. Is that technologically challenging because you want to do your best to match the, the lips moving and the well, actors? I feel, bad for the, I feel bad for the writers who have to do the timestamp on each line. Because when I get the script, say, because last one I played a character named Brick Fister. And he was the, he was the lead uh, guy, like jungle guy, who was out there trying to save this woman. Oh, so he wasn't, he wasn't a porn star. He wasn't, although that'd be fun to do, too. To oh, Fister, you know. Just yeah, yeah. You know, exactly. But uh, so someone has to timestamp these lines, and I feel horrible for them, because there's hundreds of lines in a script, and they have to literally go and look at the movie and see where the person starts talking, timestamp it, where they stop talking, timestamp it, and then move on to the next line. Wait, wait, is that the writer? Is that the writer or the editor who has to deal with that? Well, well, by the time the script gets to me, before it's edited, I have to have the timestamps on every line. Uh, okay, I explain that, because I think I understand, but I'm not sure. I do. So when you're watching a movie on the bottom, right? right. On the bottom, there's a scrolling time, uh, time scroll. There's like Just like on scroll. YouTube. Just like on YouTube. So there's a time right, scroll, right. Uh, but it's, you know, it's set in a black bar. Yep. And, uh, and it's telling you. So when I see a line in the script, I go, okay, this line is at 11 minutes, 19, and 19 okay. seconds. So I right, have to right. go to look, see it, watch it, watch the guy's mouth move. And I have a little recording thing set up. And then I press play. I try to emote kind of what his face looks like with, right. my, voice, with my voice. And then, you know, and we just do it that way. Do you have to actually, you know, do you have to try to make your... Um your mouth match what he's doing with the open and close. Well, the funnier you know. part of, I think it's funnier when what you're saying, what I'm saying doesn't really match what his mouth is doing, right. but kind of does. I think that's funnier. Well, that's the old, there, there's the, um, I can't remember if it's SNL or Second City. There are skits that would make fun of the badly dubbed Japanese monster yeah. movies. <laughs> you know, where I think yeah. Jim Carrey used to do it. I can go, like that, but yeah, but yeah. he would figure out how to make the words not match what his own mouth was doing. Yeah, that was uh, in Living Color. That was the. Is that what it was? And was it Jim Carrey? Jim Carrey, yeah. Okay. Yeah, he was he was brilliant, man. Yeah, I I won't do it, but I do a fire a fire marshal bill. Let me show you something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Shit, I could talk to you forever, dude. Um, <laughs> So, so what are you doing next? You know, what's uh, next well, on the know, horizon? So, okay, so uh, I do plays, uh, a lot of theater. I love theater. It's where I started. It's probably where I'll end um, in this business. But uh, so I've done two so far with a writer named Howard Scora. He, he's a, a brilliant screenplay uh, uh, theater uh, right. playwriter, playwright. And uh, I've done his last two. I've done his only two. And he's just written another one called... Um, called uh what the hell's the name of the oh gaslight house on the uh, Long sound all his plays take place in new york is it about and gaslighting or is it not it's about gaslighting yeah it's about uh i'm set i'm, pl I'm playing the lead um let's see we were supposed to start rehearsal in july and go up in september okay, okay. now 
we don't know if we're ever going to do it this year. I mean, it might be pushed next year, but it is a brilliant script. Man. That's it's brilliant. So I got some trivia to bring this full circle. So if you look behind me, this wall, and this, this is, I live in a 1740 farmhouse. Oh, nice. In Bucks County. And if you look right oh, here, this is, this shows you how thick my brick walls are. Or better, you can look over there. Wow. So my house is the Lloyd Boulder Stun, not Boulder Sun, but Boulder Stun farmhouse. And a guy named Boulderston from that family wrote the original, not the, the original book, but wrote the first screenplay for Gaslight. No way. I way. Wow. Um, but I Googled That's it when crazy. I first got the place. Yeah. So I, I actually have a sort of a very tenuous connection. And not the one who lived here in 1740, but some member of this extended family. Yeah. Um, his claim to That's fame cool. is he wrote the, uh, maybe the Broadway version. I don't know much about it. Yeah. But Gaslight started semi-related to this building that I'm sitting That's in. That's great. That's cool, man. That's it is cool. pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. So, um, all right. So last time we did the show, we had Mo walk over. Does she feel like it or you want to um, scream for her? I don't know where. I don't know where she. I don't know. I don't know. Could you give me a second to see what? Yeah, what? yeah. I'll entertain the crowd. I'll do some dance routines. All right, I'm not going to do any dance routines. I don't know how to address the camera. Now I'll address the camera. Here we go. And if I knew how to edit, I would do it, but I don't know how to edit on Zoom. So you can see him right there. He's sort of walking around. We're going to see if we can get him over here. Something is going on. Hey, while we're on a break, everyone, um, I'm going to do a plug for a company that has nothing to do with our show so far. So I recently signed up for First Leaf uh, for uh, wine delivery. It's, it's, it's kind of like the old Columbia house with the records. Well, I'm doing a promo. You want to help me? She is in her uh, studio. She's got an art okay. studio outside, and she's covered in paint, and she says, not today. I said, all right, we'll do it another time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which because we had so much fun last time. You guys were very we lovey dovey last time. I guess you know her relatively well. A little bit. Yeah. A little so, bit. Um, so you've got this going on. You, you're going to go back to plays and you're keeping your creative juices very much flowing. Well, I have to because if I don't, I will fucking kill somebody. What is going on? So I think this will be a great way to sort of wrap things up. Mm -hmm. I've never thought about this before. Um, for the artistic heart and brain, mm -hmm. how do you feel if you're not expressing or exercising that muscle? Depressed. Really? Depressed. That did, wait, wait, I'm okay. That literally took you a nanosecond to come up with that. I've been there a thousand times. Depressed. Really? Uh, yeah. Um, not not worth. Not. I'm not. Uh, I'm. Uh, I'm stifling what I am. Wow. And when I have to do that, like my biggest thing in life is I'm not for everyone. Some people okay. may go, oh, my God, this fucking guy. Some people are like, oh, my God, he's great. But right, they can be, oh, my God, this fucking guy. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, right. exactly. But that's none of my business. Right. So right. I, if I can't be me, then I'm no good. That's, I mean, that's really cool. So, so when do you think you first sort of realized that there was that, that peak, and I'm calling, I'm metaphorically calling it a muscle that yeah. you, you as a human being would atrophy if that muscle was not exercised. When do you think you first realized that? Um, I'm going to say probably as a child. Yeah. I mean, I could, yeah, because it was just, it was something that I had to do. I had to be, you know, I remember in third grade, oh my God, there was a play called uh, Campbell's Soup or something. It was, it was, uh, mm. And I wanted to play, oh, oh, and I got the part of Pierre, which was okay. he, all he did the whole time was sing, I don't care. And then the mom would be, some lovely cream of wheat. And my line would be, I don't care. Because it was like this kid who just didn't care about it. Got the yeah. part. And like after that, man, it was like, I just knew I wanted to do something. I didn't know it was acting. Yeah. I wanted to do something. That, you, know? you know what's so cool about that? So... That experience from third grade is yeah. imprinted in your brain. It's hardwired into your neurons, yeah. floating through your butt. It, and you might have a better memory of that than your 17th acting gig. Not your first, or, but your 17th. Or two days ago, because. Yeah. Well, you're old now. You know? yeah, exactly. 
Hey, I'm 47, man. Uh, you're young. You're a you're a freaking kid. I'm 56. That's, nice. Oh my god, that's at least what I am. So you're a kid. You have at least two or three years in front of you. Um, <laughs> so this was fun. Um, I, I'm so appreciative that you came back. I, I was actually I felt so horribly the first. Oh time. man, don't worry about it. I you know I wanted to do it again. You're a you're not a dick, and uh, and you know it was fun. It was fun you you know what Zoom just did to me. I think right. you said you're a nice guy, and Zoom's like, I'm not going to let him say that. We didn't hear it. Say it again. You're a nice guy. Oh, good for my frail ego. That's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so here's what we're going to do this time. This, this is the critical piece. I'm going to hit end. Okay. And presumably, my computer is about to say converting. And when it, <laughs> and when it says that, yeah. I'm going to zoom you back. We'll have it because I don't even, I don't have your cell phone yet. But I'll okay. get it someday so I can stalk you. Um, but I'll call you and say we're good. So here okay. we go. All right. um, say good night, Gracie. Good night, Gracie. All right, here we go. Goodbye. It was wonderful having you. All right, take Thanks, care. Good night.